Hi there, I'm Robin Chevry, and I am a business and clarity coach for women who want to make an impact and an income online. I'm here on the Online Prosperity Show, and we'll be talking about how to start your business in total alignment from the start. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today I've brought you the business and clarity coach herself, Robin. Robin, how are you doing, my love? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Fantastic. Now, if you're watching this show right now, you would understand that we're always bringing to you experts in their own realm that will help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, you don't have to do all the things that you think you're supposed to be doing um, in your business. Robin's calling is to actually help women to understand that they can show up in their real self and still be accepted, loved, and you can still be successful. A lot of us are in the humdrum of doing it all and trying to please people that don't even care about what we have to show the world. So that's why I brought in Robin because her mission in this world is to help women start their business in total alignment from start to finish and also inspire them to create the life that they dream of because it's actually possible. Now, Robin, I could go on and on and talk about everything else that you've done, but I think it's better to hear it from the horse's mouth. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually got started to become the business and clarity coach that you are today. Yeah, thank you so much for that. I, um, it, you really hit the nail on the head with everything that you just said, because we do get so caught up in the day to day. You know, we forget to look at our bigger vision and what we really want to do. and what excites us, like what feels good in our business. And um, I think, yeah, that's the biggest thing is just, I teach my clients that there really are no rules. Like you get to show up as yourself and, you know, do the work that loves, like that lights you up, that you love to do and um, help other people in the way and make great money doing it. So it's just kind of like the best of all worlds. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I got my start. Um, you know, I have been working in the call center industry actually since I was 18 years old. Um, worked for a number of different companies. My husband and I have worked together um, everywhere we've gone, which is, is really fun too. Um, and so, you know, I have, I had a great career and um, just, you know, we had gotten married, we had bought our house, we had, you know, all the things that, you know, check the boxes of success and was kind of in a place of like, I know there's more for me. I kind of got that like deeper, that calling, you know, like there's something else out there. And I didn't know what it was at first. I was, you know, joining networking groups and trying to figure out what it was that I wanted to do and add, you know, to my life because it was really just the get up, go to work, come home, crash the TV, and then go to work the next day. Like it was that same cycle. And I was just, I don't want to say I was bored of it, but I was just looking for something more and um, ended up find, finding a network marketing company. Um, they said all the right things, right? Their message was, you know, make all the money, have the freedom, have the friendships. And, um, you know, that was really, I think on a deeper level, what I was looking for is that, you know, real connection with the, you know, entrepreneur um, type personality, people who were just ready to think outside the box, put themselves out there, you know, take risks and do all these things. And so um, I just fell in love with being able to, you know, help other people and women, especially, you know, just realize that there wasn't just, <clears throat> that same, you know, day-to-day -day lifestyle out there for them. There really was something else that they could create, and this was an opportunity for them to do that um, with a business that wasn't like a massive investment financially and things like that. So that really excited me. Um, but I was, you know, in a company and, and with products and things like that that weren't necessarily exactly like who I am, um, and that's really, I think, what led me down to my journey was I was willing to do all the things. I'm super ambitious, like high achiever, like I'm the one who, you know, got A's in school and, you know, I've always checked all the, all the boxes. And so um, I pushed myself in my business. I had a lot of success. I had a huge team. I was, you know, promotions, bonuses, all of these things. 
And, um, but at the same time, I was like, to a point where I couldn't recognize myself after a few years in business, I had, um, you know, gained like 40 pounds, even though I was in a, a health and wellness business, which is like the opposite of what's supposed to be happening. Um, you know, I was just, you know, not, couldn't, couldn't recognize myself in the day to day. I was just like so much pressure, so much anxiety. I was spending all my time on my business. I was not like engaging and just being present and enjoying my life. Um, so I really had to like take a step back and look at that. And as I did, my whole business crumbled um, because I was the one like controlling everything and, you know, making sure everyone was doing the things they were supposed to. Um, and so I really, I really had to like stop and reevaluate. And I, I ended up hiring my first life coach at that point because I knew I had a lot of business support um, with, with the people I was working with. You know, they were giving me the strategy but I was like, there's something deeper that I'm not getting here, right? Like I have this success, but I'm still not happy because we think that success is what's gonna bring us our happiness um, and our fulfillment. And so uh, when I found my, my life coach, I worked with her you know, for about eight months, just diving into like reconnecting with who I was because it, even in the corporate world, I had been showing up in ways that were not really who I am, right? We kind of start to build our career and we're, um, you know, just trying to prove ourselves and, and you know, do all of these things that I was very much like in my masculine energy, like checking all the boxes and, and um, you know, doing all the things and being in the boys club at work and that kind of thing, right? And so it was like, if I protect myself and put up the walls and don't show them who I really am, then um, I can just push through and make it happen. And, you know, I, I was always like, I'm going to get the next promotion. The next thing that opens up, like I was always pushing myself to go Great. further. Nice. Um, and so I carried that over to my business, of course. But um, yeah. yeah, that's what, what led me to my burnout and really having to realize like who I am and start living that way. And that, that's what brings us like the most joy. So Fantastic. Thank you so much for that eloquent story and um you did take us on a journey there robin because a lot of people really would envy where you were a lot of people would look at what you had and how you got there and they would think that was the bead and and all now you do then you know come back to your senses and realign with yourself and figure out once you've gotten to the top and you see the view from the top it's not what you anticipated now a lot of people might find themselves maybe still halfway through the mountain or they are already at the table top, but now they're so lost um, as to how to then go ahead. Is this the kind of people that you start working with then uh, to get them realigned uh, to, to what their true north actually is? Yeah, that's exactly it. So it's usually um, my clients are kind of, they, they have a business, they've been dabbling in it, they're trying to make things work, but they're in the space where I was right before that burnout of like, something is just not clicking and it's not because I'm doing the wrong things, right? So my clients are all very much like me where they're pouring themselves into their work, they're trying to make it successful, maybe they have some success, but they're just not feeling that like deep connection and fulfillment from their work and right. so yeah that's really where where I come in and say hey this sounds scary because you put so much work into this but is this what you really want and sometimes it's a hell yes and we just need to reframe things sometimes it's an absolute like oh my god no this isn't what I want and I've worked so long to put this together and it's not what I want to do at all and so you know I have clients that go both <laughs> both ways but then what we do is we really figure out what it is that they want and build from there um, instead of just in the you know the the daily to-do list thing we we look at that bigger vision and say how do you align with that absolutely no I mean obviously there will be a lot of people that are sort of in that situation, but half of it is not their fault because growing up, people like us do things like this. Um, their mother would have gone up in that way, get a job, get a husband, 
um, get somebody who's going to look after you and make sure you keep that job, keep that husband, but there's no alignment in everything else that they're going to be doing. Or if they do uh, maybe part from, from the norm status quo, they then go in maybe and um, tackle on a business of which that's where you then step in and help them to be aligned. Now, what then needs to change within that person? Because the problems that got them to where they are are not the problems that are going to take them away uh, from, from that uh, particular, you know, predicament. Yeah, totally. So, you know, I work with all women and I think the biggest thing is um, the women I work with are very much, we're in our head, right? So we're, we're just overthinking things. We're um, trying to, like you said in the beginning, trying to please people who don't even care about what we're doing. Um, you know, we are just showing up in, in like, we have all these limiting beliefs that tell us like, this is what your life is supposed to be like, and this is what success looks like. And, and, you know, it's slightly different for everyone, but I think it's all very a similar story of go to work, go, or sorry, go to school, you know, go to college, get a good job be responsible, you know, buy a house, manage your finances, right? We have all of these like markers for success that we're all kind of brought up with. Nobody when we're young is, and, 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 you know, maybe when we're very little is saying, you know, you can be whatever you want in the world. But then when you start saying it out loud, they're like, ah, oh, that, you know, maybe tried something different or that seems a little too, too much, right? It's like we're, we're dampened because of other people's limiting beliefs, even from when we're a kid. And um, so we, we turn off our too much, we turn it down. We, we stop listening to our intuition. And especially for women, it's, it's really like our bodies. We stop tuning into our intuition, which speaks to us through our bodies and we get up in our head and we overthink and we over plan and we worry about too many things. We try to control everything and just get to a place where we're just like spinning all the time and it feels like chaos. And so really when it going through this journey and I even have a group, um, it's called chaos to clarity because it's that spinning in your mind, that constant like overthinking, like what's next thing and how do I make sure that nothing goes wrong? And it's like, that's really what's driving that anxiety that's coming up for so many people now. Um, and then just being able to get out of that and like learn how to like ground yourself and meditate and be present and listen to yourself again. Cause we like literally shut off our ability to listen to that inner voice. Absolutely. Now the inner voice that you're talking about is probably predicated on the environment uh, that you would have grown up in. You did mention that when little girls are growing up or boys are growing up, um, they have so much ambition. I knew I was going to be a pilot when I grew up, but look at me, I'm just pushing buttons in this office now. Um, somebody would have told me that I'm aiming too high, you know, um, and, and, and that happens. How much influence does the environment that people are in have on whoever is maybe looking to start their business or actually start living, um, you know, into the highest uh, possible version of themselves? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's critical. <laughs> it's like a critical, critical thing, your environment, because you think about your day to day, right? If you're still in a corporate job and you're trying to build a business, um, you're spending time on social media, or if you're even building your, your business on social media, which most of my clients are, um, we have thousands and millions of voices saying in our society saying like, this is what life looks like. Don't be too much, right? Don't aim too high. And it's not that anyone's doing it on purpose to bring us down. It's, it's their own kind of limiting beliefs and what we we've, we've all grown up with. Um, but when we start getting into surrounding ourselves with like other entrepreneurs, other people who are dreaming big, who are saying there is no limit, there is no rules, uh, or there are no rules, um, you know, like you literally get to create whatever you want in this life, you start to listen to those voices instead of the millions of others. And you start to get to choose in your mind. And this is where like mindset work comes into play. It's just like, it's 
you know, 90% of what we do. It's never like you're not doing enough or you don't know the right things. It's always, you know, getting in the right mindset and believing the next step that you can take. And so when you start surrounding yourself with people who are in that, um, you know, entrepreneurial, big dreamer, think outside the box kind of place, um, you start to get those voices instead of all the other ones that you grew up with that are kind of been on repeat forever. Absolutely. Now, I mean, Robin, somebody would be watching this video right now and they're like, okay, it's all good and well, but I'm not Robin. I'm not Brene. I'm not confident. I'm not as good looking. Um, and I'm, I'm just afraid it might not work out. Fear is one of the biggest things that stops people dead in their tracks. And then you did touch on a little bit about mindset. How then do you bring people to face that fear and do it anyway and um maybe just really help them to truly nourish themselves with positivity and growth in order for them to be do and have a happier existence or a business that's profitable and enjoyable yeah so this is actually one of my favorite topics to talk on is fear and you know just fear of being vulnerable and putting ourselves out there um and so there's a few different things that i like to touch on and the first is just like the very first thing I do with my clients is help them remember who they are, you know, at their very core. Remember that we are all like perfect human beings exactly as we are. There are no mistakes in the way that we were made and, and that we were born, right? And so we get really back into that like deep universal truth that there's nothing wrong with you. Maybe you've made mistakes. Maybe you don't like certain things about yourself, but it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you and you don't have to, you know, measure your worth based on your accomplishments or how you look or any of these things, right? So that's literally the first step because all these women I'm working with are, you know, getting to a place where they're being influencers online and they're putting themselves completely out there. And so, of course, all of those fears comes up, come up. It's like, oh, I'm finally going to be seen for who I am. We don't walk around like that all day, completely open and, you know, showing the world who we are without fear of judgment, right? Like nobody walks around like that. <laughs> and so um, that's, that's the absolute first step is helping them remember who they are and empowering them to say, like, regardless of any of those things, you know, how you look or, um, you know, your, your past mistakes or any of that, like you get to still do all of these things and you're still amazing um, just because you are you. And um, so that's the first thing. And the second is really understanding that like fear is just an emotion in our body and it's there to protect us, right? So back in caveman days, if we were going to step outside of the cave, right, we would maybe get eaten by a saber tooth tiger or something, right? And so if we're going to, you know, do something that is, that could potentially make us not loved by our tribe of people, right, or judged by them or thrown out by them and we're off on our own, that is literally like our survival instincts. So fear is there to protect us. Um, but when it's, when we understand that that fear is not like the, the thing that we are fearing is not actually true, right? So we fear being seen for who we are because of those deep seated like survival beliefs that we're going to be alone forever and someone's going to judge us and hate us or whatever, right? Like it's not actually true because when we step out, sure, we're going to have people who, you know, say things, we all get the haters online, but we're also going to open ourselves up to truly connect with the people that we're supposed to be working with to inspire other people right like we've just we've gone so far past the like um you know the the certain type of marketing that's like flashy and glossy and all of this like people want to see the real stuff and so when you open yourself up and just say this is who i am and i'm ready to own it and it doesn't mean sharing like all your deep dark secrets just means saying like I'm going to own that this is the type of person I am and, you know, that kind of thing. So for me, like actually being an introvert was something that I didn't, until I really learned, I didn't understand um, about myself and I used to judge myself for it. So it was like, you know, I didn't want to stay out, um, you know, every night and, and be around people all the time. And I couldn't understand why I was so like crabby and I was like, thought something was wrong with me until I understood and accepted that 
I just need to recharge and, you know, spend time on my own and that type of thing. Right. So it used to be something that I thought I was getting judged for. I was judging myself for it, but when I really started accepting it, now it's just like it's part of my life and I know how to, you know, really light up my energy with other people. But I also, I love to spend time by myself. I always have, a, you know, I'm happy for hours just like reading a book on my own or something. So, um, and then the next piece is just that like fear is in our body. It's just a feeling. And when we, when we understand that we're not actually going to die, when we can like just sit and feel that fear, but do it anyway. Um, Cause that's what it is. The fear is trying to keep us from, from death. <laughs> right. And, and so when we understand and can like rise above that and separate from that and say, okay, this is just fear showing up in my body. Like I can feel it and I don't have to push it away. Um, I'm going to do the thing anyway, because I know it's going to move me forward. It's going to inspire someone. It's going to, you know, keep me going in my business. And so, uh, yeah, it's really just like understanding that it's a feeling that you don't have to allow to control you. Absolutely. All right, Robin, you've convinced us. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm going to go in, you know, just start all, start whatever it is. I will bring my chaos and try and seek clarity whichever way. But then we hit a, um, a, a, a brick wall. You know, there's, there's that anxiety of perfectionism, you know, as, 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 as women, which I'm not supposing the audience now is just left with women. The guys have already <laughs> gone on to swipe left or swipe right, whatever they do these days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> being perfect and, and coming out, like you say, you know, uh, Pantene, everything is, is together and um, how the media wants to present themselves. I've got a story before you jump in. Um, we've got a three-year-old and uh, my wife was so excited one day, Robin, that she had had one of her legs shaved and that was her biggest accomplishment for the day because she never has that opportunity because of the little one right there. So I'm thinking there's women out there that just are happy that something has been done despite the family and despite all the sacrifice they've done for everybody that are around them. And as much as they then get crippled with wanting to be perfect, how do you then help people in that space for them to actually um, not want to escape their current life and just be happy with what they have? Yeah. So I love that. <laughs> I love that story. Um, yeah. Perfectionism is something that I definitely struggled with for a long time. And someone once said to me that it's the lowest standard because it's unattainable. So perfect isn't, isn't real. It's not a real thing in our life, right? There is no human out there that is perfect. And what is perfect anyway, right? But it's just, you know, exactly like you said, it's the gloss, it's the magazines, it's the media that we've seen out there, and this is how you're supposed to be. Um, but it's, it's just simply not real because even what you're seeing isn't real. It's airbrushed or photoshopped or whatever. And so um, just understanding that no one is perfect and exactly like you said, like accepting who you are and your, your current set of circumstances um, allows you to get out of the space of trying to be perfect. So what I like to ask my clients, when it comes down to it, it really is a choice because this is like really developing our mental strength. Um, it really is a choice to say, like, how is this serving you? Right? How is this serving you? Because you're sitting there, you're constantly thinking about like, oh, I have to show up in this way for this person and I'm trying to please everyone and I want everyone to think I'm perfect. How is it serving you, right? It's the walls you've put up over the years to try to be accepted and liked and loved, but it's always causing suffering inside of you, right? It's always causing that, like it doesn't feel safe to show up and be me. And so how freeing is it to just say, when I show up as myself, yeah, there will be people who fall away, who judge me, who think otherwise, but there's nothing I can do to stop that from happening ever, right? No matter how perfect you are, you're always going to be judged by somebody. 
And um, so just like letting go of that expectation and all putting all that pressure on yourself and saying like, it's such a freeing thing to be able to say like, this is who I am. This is what I want to do with my life. And I'm no longer going to, um, you know, do things just to please other people if they don't feel good for me. Absolutely. Now, Robin, obviously you've brought us, you know, 360. Now we can't have an excuse with our environment. We can't have excuse with fear. And now we can't also have an excuse with perfectionism. I think if somebody's watching right now, they are ready to join you um, on the journey to actually start becoming in total alignment um, you know, with either their business or with their life and start living the life that they dream. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you're also part of a group of people that is contributing um, in a book that's going to be released um, towards the end of the, the year, 2018. Now, could you just tell us a little bit about um, that part and then um, how people can get a hold of you um, if they have actually... Um, you know, started to, to, to be, you know, impartial to what you've been telling us right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited for the book. Um, it's a collaboration with 12 women and we each have our own chapter. Um, the book is called She is Unstoppable and it really is just, you know, the stories of women who have overcome you know, adversity and illnesses and, and different things. And, um, you know, it's like the Phoenix rising from the ashes uh, type of stories. And so if you're really looking for like some inspiration and just ready to like take on that next level and get in your power and get grounded and like, yes, I can do anything, um, then then this is definitely going to be that book. So uh, yeah, it's coming out by the end of this year. We've got some awesome launch parties happening in London and New York. And um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really excited for that. There's been a lot, a lot of work going into that recently. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, so I do also, um, I offer group and one-to-one -one coaching programs, running a retreat coming up in March in Costa Rica. Um, but I don't think there's, you know, I will ever be at a point where I'm never doing this type of work. It's just something that's not even a question for me and I can't imagine not doing it. So just working one-to-one -one and helping women through this journey um, of, you know, accepting themselves and creating the business that they absolutely love and doing it their way and, you know, giving them permission to just show up as themselves. So. Absolutely. And I like that word, giving themselves permission to show up. Right. Just like you've showed up on this video right now and you've taken all our defenses and ripped apart all our excuses um somebody would have been like okay that's fine you've got a course maybe i want to jump onto that but they're a little bit not uh convinced as yet you know what's like your go-to advice that somebody just shows up on your door right now starts knocking and they're like robin help me i'm not in alignment what would you say to them yeah so the biggest thing that i have my clients do is really just get to a place where they can step out of their thoughts because our thoughts are the chaos, right? They're, we overthink, half of them aren't true, most of them aren't true. We're just constantly thinking all of these thoughts every day. Um, and when we do things like learn how to meditate and, and watch our thoughts, um, when we have that like universal connection meditation and can really just get out of our head and back into our body, then we can learn to listen to our intuition again. And our intuition always guides us in the right way. Um, it will help us guide us to, you know, the right next coach, the right next opportunity. It will help us put the blinders on and say, this is a part of my bigger vision. What does that look like? Is this in alignment with that, right? So every time I'm making a big decision or about to do something important, or, you know, even before getting on here, like I will sit and meditate and bring myself back to stillness, back into my body, and just remind myself of my truth, my power, and step back into that, and then be guided from there. So really the first thing that I do with, with everyone and the first piece of advice I, I give is 
get out of your head. <laughs> get back into your body because your body speaks to you through the way that you feel, right? So if you're saying, do I want to do this or do I not want to? Your body will say yes or no, and, and you'll be able to go from there. So it's just, it's such a powerful tool. And then obviously there's, you know, so much more, so much more once you're guided and, and still, um, but that really is a first step because you can't really make decisions from, from up in that chaotic place in your mind. Absolutely. Oh, I cannot thank you, Robin, for your time on the show today. And especially that last remark about getting outside of your head, um, because I feel like you really need to get outside the frame for you to see the bigger picture. And once you are in that position, you'll be able to actually see what pieces are missing and what pieces need to be replaced so you can be in alignment. Now, if you've been watching uh, the show up until now, I would like to thank you because obviously um, you've gotten so much value. And obviously, if you're going to be connecting with Robin, I will put all the details um, at the bottom there um, in post edit. Now, as you've noticed, Robin is here to help you remember to connect with who you are at your absolute core. And like she says, you really need to connect with yourself in order to be realigned so that you can start being who you've always wanted to be. And so you can create the business and the life of your dreams. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Robin, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.